Florida State, 31, and which, by the way, you called this. I Miami, 28. Hey, I got a question. And I, I was going to talk about this on, on my SBR show, but since like tens of people watch it now that it's only on the Twitter, uh, I want to have this conversation here. I think the state of Florida should do what the city of Boston does for college hockey, which is called the bean pot, which is they take like three weeks off during the off season and they all play each other. You have Harvard and you have Boston university and you have like, you have four or five and they're always ranked in like the top, I don't know, 25 of, of college hockey, all four of these schools. And they're all in the small city of Boston and they play what's called the bean pot. It's a, it's a round robin tournament. I, I think the state of Florida should have this for football, and I don't know who the best team in Florida is right now. I've got no idea. i got no idea. I, I will tell like, you this. I probably would put my money on UCF. UCF kind of got smoked by SMU yesterday. I, I understand that. I understand that. Who would you put your money on then? Uh, right this second, I'd probably put it on Florida State because I think Florida they could state, beat everybody else in the state. I like, trust Norvell probably more than all the coaches in there. Yeah, I, I don't think it, it like give give uh, give me Dylan Gabriel at UCF, and yeah, I can see where you're coming from. Without Dylan oh, Gabriel, no, Dylan, with Dylan Gabriel, it's a it's a it's a runaway. Like it yeah. ain't close. Yes, but that would be interesting. I'll take I'll take the four biggest schools in the in the state. I'd like to see them do a play little a round robin, robin tournament, and and I I'm going to tell you it's a Yahtzee Cup, man. You I, I bet I bet if you played that tournament a hundred times, you'd get a different team winning. And probably so. Probably so. So Florida State wins this one, and it, the postgame win expectancy number shocked me. Shocked me in this one. Yeah. 91% for Florida State, yeah. and that's even with them having to come back and score the touchdown late uh, to win. I know they had to come back. They dominated this game, though. Yes, they did. Absolutely did. And Miami uh, should really not have... I, I'm not going to say they shouldn't have been in the game, but... It didn't feel like they deserved to be there at the end. Like, right. I don't, kinda, I don't, but I don't think they did. I don't think they did. I don't think they played a good game at all. No, it was twenty to seven at the end of the first half. It was twenty to uh, fourteen at the end of the third quarter, and then Miami came out, started doing some stuff, like found a way to, you know, they they, they figured something out, and and then. And then Florida State was able to get it done late. The late touchdown drive for Florida State. Seven plays, 80 yards, and and got the touchdown. It was only a minute 53 that went off the clock. Uh, so they were able to move the football. Yards per play, Florida State 5.9 to 5.1 in the red zone. Florida State was 6 of 6, scoring Miami only 3 of 3. Time of possession was big on Florida State. 36 minutes and 9 seconds to 23.51. Three turnovers that led to seven points for uh, Miami, and then one turnover that led to seven points for Florida State. So yep. basically, the the difference there was the time of possession, which, I mean, Miami gave them the ball three times. Like, they were only able to score seven points, but when you don't have the football, it's kind of hard to score. So, you know, this was, this was an interesting game. Third downs, Florida State could do nothing. They were 3 of 15, but they did go 2 of 2 on fourth down. Miami went 4 of 4 on fourth down, and Miami was 6 of 16 on third down on it. Uh, But Miami could not run the football. 43 yards rushing in this game on 23 carries. That's only 1.9 a clip. Uh, On the other side, like Florida State, 48 carries, 160 yards. They were going to run the football. It was only 3.3 per clip, but this, this was awesome. Like Florida State, this this could actually get Manny Diaz fired. Like he he had built up such goodwill. I I'm really curious. I thought all that goodwill was fraud. It's that that's kind of what it seems like because as soon as you get a loss, like once you're on the hot seat, you're on the hot seat forever. So because yeah. the pro the problem is is that offense was never really actually good. Like I just think they were playing shit teams. Look at the ACC. Look at their opponents. There's not a good defense outside of Clemson has a good defense. NC State has a good defense. That's it. That's the list. They don't. N- nobody is great in this conference at defense. And so yeah, your offense looked pretty good for three weeks. But and against if you crap can't, opponents, yeah. And if you can't, it's not that Florida State has a good defense. It's like if you have an no, off day, Florida State like, does not have a good defense. No, if you have an off game, you then couldn't score against them. Obviously, you you won't be able to beat them if you have an off game. Tyler Van Dyke, twenty five out of forty seven. That's only fifty three percent completion percentage. Uh, Three hundred sixteen yards, four touchdowns, one interception here. 
Yeah, they were not able to get it done. Florida State drove the field, and that was a program-defining drive, I think. Like, I, I feel good, like that one. Good when, for Norvell. Yes. I, thought, I thought Mike Norvell was just on the come-up. I just thought this team is getting better every week. They were not good before the season started. They were not good in the middle of the season. We are at the end of the season, and this team is getting better every week. That's a sign of coaching. Same guys playing that were at the beginning of the year. It, it, it's just they're they're learning the system. They're learning the program. They're they're getting more comfortable in the offense. They're getting more comfortable with the defensive scheming. And I just. I just think they're getting better every week. Doesn't mean they're good. Doesn't mean they're there by any stretch. But they are substantially better than they were when the season started. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures. Or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe. And we'll see you soon.